Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome to Ikeda. Today we will see time domain behavior, how to obtain from poll zero plot. Let us see what it is. Here you can see, I have drawn a function which is a network function and it's pole zero plot. Network function is given by this equation, h is the scaling factor and these are all the roots s minus s1, s2 up to sn and up to sm. Poles are plotted, just an example. And these are the poles which determine the time domain behavior of given function. Now what we are going to do? For these pair of poles, you can see here, it is SA, SA conjugate, SC, SC conjugate, and B and D are separate poles. How to obtain their time domain behavior is what we will see. Let us see for the first pair SA and SA conjugate. We know that S is sigma plus J omega. Now these poles being on the left hand side, that means the real part is negative. This is what we know from restriction on poles and zeros, which is a topic of separate video, which already you can refer. So this sigma being negative, that means it will be a decaying function. And if you try to draw the graph for this complex conjugate pair of poles, it will be something like this. So for SA and SA conjugate, the time domain behavior is what we are drawing. And like this. So these blue lines say that there is a decaying graph which is because of this e raise to minus sigma t and this sinusoidal graph is because of it is e raise to j omega t which results in either sine or cosine when combined. So this is the graph for SA and SA conjugate. Now we have seen this pair. Now what about SC and SC conjugate? It will be the similar graph with less amplitude because here it is further away from this j omega axis and so sigma is more. Suppose sigma here is let us say it is minus 1 and let us say it is here minus 3. So obviously it is going to decrease with higher rate and so This is how the graph will be, it will decrease with, decrease very gradually, like this. So here amplitude is greater than this amplitude because these are, these poles are nearer to the omega axis, where these are not nearer, these are further away. Now what about these poles SB and SD, you can see that this SB pole is nearer to the omega axis and it has only real part. So it, the pole is something like S minus 2, this SB can be minus 2 and SD suppose it is equal to minus 4. So for this SB will decrease with minus 2 rate, E raise to minus 2T and this SD is going to decrease with double the rate. So the graphs will be as follows. So you can see the difference, this is the graph for SB which is decreasing gradually and for SD it is decreasing suddenly because it is further away from the omega axis. Suppose this SA and SA conjugate pair was here, just assume that here there is a pair called as, let us say that it is SE and SE conjugate, then this pair would result in time domain behavior like an increasing graph or increasing exponential term. And so on where this blue line represents the increasing exponential term. So this is how the time behavior occurs. Here also it is going to increase in this way, exponentially increasing graph. So these are all the locations where the time behavior can be studied from the pole zero diagram. So thank you very much guys for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.